Hey everyone, I'm here with Elian for my first uh, interview on the channel. He went undefeated in ADVAQ Season 1, and yeah, let's, uh, let's find out where he's from, how long he's been playing Pokemon, what he's all about, how he achieved that. So, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, Elian? Well, I know this. Well, I'm making Elian from Mexico every day. Pokemon and Science, 2015, I guess. 2015, was that? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's quite a while. We were playing uh, in three Science last year, or not? No. Yes, last year. Is that with like ADVAU specifically, or just competitive? Just competitive. Okay, so it's a pretty fast ascent. Um, yeah, I mean, let's obviously like talk a little bit about like the achievement. Uh, obviously, um, the ADVAU season is still this one's pretty new. Uh, so the, the competition sort of amongst the best players like myself, Kale, TLTK, Colin, um, some others. Uh, so I guess the first thing I want to ask is just like about like what your style of play is, what Pokemon you like using, those sorts of things. Just trying to give us a little bit of a rundown on what you like. Yeah, a lot of players that win the tournament, uh, they're, they're all good, but I don't know if, uh, if, I, if I have a lot of luck, but the matchups are very really favorable for me. Yeah, I mean, to to completely sweep a season, you need some luck as well as, like, a whole mountain of skill, to be honest. Um, in RBYU on Pokemon Perfect, there were, like, three instances of people completely sweeping seasons in RBY on there. Um, in ADV, obviously, it's a bit of a different tier. Um, well, as well as this one was also just best of three. Um, but, yeah. What was uh what was like your hardest matchup, um Ooh, or hardest that's set? Good, that's a good question. I don't know. I think it was Skull over or against you because uh I don't know I didn't know how you play until until the match. So that's I think that's why it was the most difficult. Yeah, we only ended up we played. We must have played twice, mustn't we? Because in the third tournament, because I signed up quite late and we didn't have enough players, I ended up not even being able to participate. But the uh, the first two ones, we, we played both times and you won both times. Uh, I don't remember the sets in detail, but I'm sure probably... Well, I don't go down without a fight. Um, but I think you probably play a style that matches up quite well against Stool, which I tend to run, if I remember correctly. Um, in terms of your style, but yeah, I guess uh, how would you sort of describe your style? What sort of teams you like to play with? That sort of thing. I think I I do I play better with uh, um, without spikes teams. So I mean, I can play with the spin, but I I don't like really spike teams like like the users. Uh, Skarmory for the rest time. I think they are very passive, so I don't like to play. So I think I play more offense teams than DSS and fat teams. Okay, now that's definitely that's definitely interesting because I tend to be quite far from that. I tend to I tend to use spikes when I can, and then just get frustrated at the fact that the spikers are a bit crap. <laughs> well. Scum's all right, but it has its it has its own severe flaws. As you say, they can be quite passive as well. Do you not even like cloister stuff, or do you tend to just avoid spikes entirely and just sort of go heavy offense without any spikes at all? I try to to avoid spike teams. I mean, if it's really necessary, I can play, and I don't have problem with that. But but I don't. I try to. 
to not play with the spikes. I think I'm I'm really bad uh, keeping the, the spikes on the on the field, so that's why I don't play. I don't play that, and also I don't like the I don't like Gengar as a, as a blocker. So if I if I will play spike teams, I think I will play Star with Dust Clubs. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I do agree that Gengar is often not the best as a spin blocker. I can I can understand that. I mean, it in some ways it's a great Pokemon, but it can be um, difficult to use it in that way. Then when you've got like a Spiker and a Gengar that doesn't really spin block for you very well. I mean, like Starmie doesn't care. And then if yeah, you don't have that, then it's like trying to use offensive push to keep up spikes is just like a very difficult way to play. But on the other hand, if you're trying to break teams without spikes, especially when you see stuff like, I don't know, um, like Milotic, for example, or that kind of thing that can be pretty hard to pressure. Uh, yeah, what sort of Pokemon do you like to rely on? Do you like to use like a lot of explosions? Do you use this, for example, or set up sweepers to, to break more defensive teams? I mean, it's my biggest problem with... Can you repeat the question? <laughs> oh yeah, no problem. So just sort of asking about like, how do you go about breaking teams then? If you're not using spikes, is there like a lot of uses of explosion? Or is there oh, a no. lot of setup sweepers? Right. Or I think I use this, I use setup teams like, uh, like Pokemon like Tyranitar with Dragon Dance and um, I play trying to predict the switches. I mean, if I know the my opponent will change to Salvi, I I I try to to get a, a lot of damage. Yeah, so you play like quite aggressively and try and make reads and switches to take advantage of your opponent, and stay a step ahead, keep the momentum up. So that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's the that's the point. The, the, I try to keep the momentum and I get pressure with with that. Awesome, awesome. So since you've been playing for like about a year, have uh, there been any other tournaments that you played on? I don't know, on like Spogon or Pokemon Perfect or something like that, where you've done well or anything remarkable, or has this sort of been like your first big break, really? Do you need me to repeat the question or? Yeah, please. Yeah, uh, I was just saying, since you've been playing for about a year competitively, have you played other tournaments like on Smogon or Pokemon Perfect and gotten any results that you're really happy with? Or was this your first big break, really? I played like eight or nine tournaments in Smogon. Because I'm not really active on Smogon. But the best record I get is in a uh, uh, Royal Olympics and I got the third place. Okay, was that the team result so, or your own oh, achievement? Yeah, so, uh, I also played seasonals and I got a uh, decent record in, in my opinion. But yeah. Awesome. And I'm I'm good with the with, with my results. I think I need to improve a lot, but uh, now I think I I can do it. I can. I'm really decent, in my opinion. Yeah, I I definitely think that you know if you can achieve a result like this, you have a lot of potential to achieve a lot in other places as well, and so on. So I hope that like this result and pretty at this interview and so on brings a bit more of a spotlight on you as a player and gets gets people to like pick you up in like team tournaments or invite you to to see to things like that sort of thing uh because yeah because um sweeping a season is never easy even when you know the tier extremely well and so on even if it's not necessarily the most stat field it's still a huge achievement um so okay uh it's kind of like the main stuff I wanted to cover on the focal side. I guess it's been 
like fairly quick. I wasn't sure how long this was going to take if we'd be sat here for an hour or or what. Um, but I guess outside of that, just curious to know, you mentioned, I think you mentioned off of, um, when we weren't recording, but that you live in Mexico. I'm just curious like a bit about like how old you are, you know, do you study or what do you work as if I can ask or, you know, just a little bit about you as well. Sorry, I... Do you need me to repeat the question again? Yeah. Yeah, no worries. I was just sort of wanted to know a bit about you as a person. Uh, you mentioned you live in Mexico, but like, do you study or do you work or how old are you? Like those I... kind of things. Both of them, I... Both of them, I... I'm working and I study education. In the last semester, last year, last year, and uh, after I graduate, I think I can I can even play more because I will have more time than than now. Right now, I don't have a lot of time. I can only play on weekends and on nights. So that's that's it. Yeah, I'm mostly like that at the moment, especially I'm starting a new job in a week, so I've got, um, I'm taking it a bit easy this week as it's like my last week at my current job, so I can sneakily play during the day perhaps, but um, yeah, mostly evenings and weekends tends to be how it is when you're growing, when you're um, a little bit older. Okay, uh, anything else you fancy talking about? Um how how do you expect to do in the next season? Um, it's expected, well, I made it best of five instead of best of three. Uh, we don't know who's going to sign up yet. Sign-ups only went up yesterday, so how do you feel about that? I think the next season will be harder than, than the first one because, yeah, the, in the first season it was a lot of good players, but that's a uh, first season. And this second season, if more people join to the tournament i think it would it would be harder for me and i think i i don't, I don't really think i can make it if i don't prepare you know oh i thought for a second i muted myself awesome uh cool anything else you want to to add to anyone watching Esta es una buena pregunta. Mm, I don't know if I have to add. Oh, yeah. The, the most difficult thing that play is what what team do you have to use? I mean, if you don't know your opponent, you usually go to the standard team. But if you know your opponent, it, it gets more difficult, in my opinion. Because if you have like to face mm, ABR because I faced it like one month a month ago and I lost. Uh, I don't know what what to play because I know what is his favorite months, but if you don't use it like but two or three that you will be in trouble trying to go. I don't know if I if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I get it. That it's when you're facing a known opponent, it's a lot more difficult because, like, you want to prepare and be like, "Oh, this po this player will use these Pokemon," but you know that they could easily bring something else, and you know it's very tricky against a known opponent. Just because of that, I guess. Have you had a good time on ladder? Have you like topped the eight of you ladder, for example, and done well there? Oh yeah, and <laughs> and it is funny because uh, when I know my opponent, I play. I use, I usually play standard teams, and when I don't know, I play on standard teams because it's the most. 
hicimos safe idea then uh, they can scold you so yeah if you want to play be well against someone you know you through you should play standard teams and not try to scout him awesome cool i think we'll end it there there's been really lovely little chat uh, I think I want to send you a little team afterwards as well, since she mentioned you played spikeless offense. Uh, since I've got something pretty sick <laughs> that I think you might like. Uh, awesome. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, the link to the ADVOU Discord will be down below. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, hopefully there will be more coming. And remember as well to sign up for ADVOU Season 2. Thank you very much.